This video will present solutions to the VCE 2023 Mathematical Methods Written Examination 2, Section B, Question 4. Question 4 is about tennis balls, their manufacturing, packaging and quality. In Part A, we can use the information about the normally distributed diameter of tennis balls, manufactured with mean of 6.7 cm and standard deviation of 0.1 cm, to find the probability of a randomly chosen tennis ball having a diameter greater than 6.8 cm. I'm going to call up the necessary distribution command via interactive, choosing the continuous command norm cdf, and to the lower as 6.8 and the upper as infinity, off the Math 2 keyboard, the standard deviation as 0.1 and the population mean as 6.7. Tapping execute, we obtain the probability value of 0.1587 to four decimal places. Part B asks for the cutoff diameter for the smallest 90% of tennis balls. This can be found using an inverse distribution command. The class pad calls this invnormcdf and it can be found via interactive distribution slash inverse distribution inverse. In the pop-up, make sure that the tail is left Enter the probability as 0.9 and enter the standard deviation and mean. Pressing execute, we obtain a diameter of 6.83 cm, correct to two decimal places. Part C asks for the probability that a randomly chosen tennis ball can fit in a can, meaning that it has a diameter of less than 6.95 cm. This is another normal CDF calculation which can be done in a very similar way to the calculation in Part A. Or if you're careful, you can edit the arguments to the Part A calculation, making the first argument negative infinity and the second one 6.95, whilst not changing sigma and mu. Our four decimal place answer is 0 0.9938. Part D describes a binomial distribution where n equals four tennis balls are chosen and the probability of success fitting into the can of any one of them is 0 0.9938, the probability found in part C. As this question is worth two marks, it is important to show some working before proceeding to calculate the probability required. In this case, writing down the distribution you are calculating with is suitable working. With that done, we can calculate the probability that y is greater than or equal to three using interactive distribution discrete binomial CDF. The lower and upper are 3 and 4, n equals 4, and the probability of success is 0 0.9938. This gives us an answer of 0 0.9998 to four decimal places. In part E, we need to find the probability that randomly chosen tennis balls are grade A with a diameter between 6.54 and 6.86, given that they fit into a can, i.e. have a diameter of less than 6.95. This conditional probability can be calculated as the division of two norm CDF calculations, either done one at a time or as a fraction. I'm going to do it as a single fractional calculation to avoid round off error. I'll paste the calculation from part C into both numerator and denominator and then edit the bounds in the numerator. With this done, we get a probability of 0.8460 to four decimal places. Note, as this question is worth two marks, it would be unwise just to write down the probability calculated. A line of working, like the conditional probability formulation that I have written, is required. Part F looks to find the standard deviation of an improved manufacturing process where 99% of tennis balls were grade A. Drawing this diagram is both a good working step, given the question is worth two marks, and also a way to get insight into the question. From here, the required standard deviation can be found using a range of methods, including trial and error, use of the z-score formula z equals x minus mu on sigma, or by solving a norm CDF equation. To use the z-score formula, we need the z-score associated with the cutoff of the bottom 99.5% of a population. I will calculate this via interactive distribution inverse 
InvNorm CDF. Enter the probability as 0 0.995 and leave sigma and mu as 1 and 0. This means that we know 2.5758 is equal to 6.87 minus 6.7 over sigma. Rearranging, sigma is 0 0.16 divided by this z-score, which is 0 0.0621 or 0 0.06 to two decimal places. As the question asks for more than 99% grade A tennis balls, this will be satisfied by a sigma value of 0 0.06 or less. So I'm going to give my final answer a sigma between 0 and 0 0.06. An alternative to using the z-score formula is to turn a norm CDF command into an equation for an unknown sigma. To do this, I'm going to grab the norm CDF command from the numerator of part E, because that calculates the probability of a grade A tennis ball, pop it into a new line, replace sigma with x, set it equal to 0 0.99 and solve. This efficiently obtains the sigma value of 0 0.0621. As this question is worth two marks, working is required, so this solution method should be accompanied by some working, like a diagram of the distribution with probabilities shown. Part G is about a confidence interval based on a sample of 32 tennis balls. From the interval's upper and lower bounds, we need to calculate the level of confidence. For starters, we can calculate p hat, given that it is the average of the upper and lower bounds. Using this value, we can set up an equation for the confidence interval width, which is 2 times the z-score by the square root of p hat by 1 take p hat over n, and this is equal to 0 0.9493 minus 0 0.7382, which is the width of the given interval. This equation can be solved by transposing or by a solve command. I'm going to solve it by transposition. With this z-score of z equals 1.6444, the confidence level can be found using norm CDF, as the confidence level is the proportion of the z distribution that lies within plus or minus 1.6444 of its mean of zero. This answer, as a percentage to the nearest integer, is 90%. An alternative method for solving this equation is trial and error. This is an appropriate technique given the level of accuracy that is called for in this question. I'm going to perform the trial and error in ClassPad statistics app. Open the calculate menu and choose interval. In the pop-up, select a one proportion z interval. I'm going to start with a confidence level of 0 0.95. I'll need that p hat value to enter an x value of 27 out of an n value of 35. This is narrower than the interval given, so the confidence level must be lower than 95%. Next I'm going to try a confidence level of 0 0.90. Tap back, make that change, then tap next. That's the one we were given. So our confidence level is 90%. As the question is worth two marks, we need to make sure we have provided sufficient evidence of our thinking. In this case, a calculation of p hat and evidence of finding a confidence interval at a level other than 90%, as well as at the 90% level, should do it. For part h, we are introduced to a probability density function f for a continuous random variable v the serving speed of a grade A tennis ball. The probability of a speed being greater than 50 meters per second can be found by calculating the definite integral of f from 50 to its upper bound of 3 pi squared plus 30. Given that the answer is required to four decimal places, I'm going to ask my class pad for a numerical calculation rather than an exact one. This is likely to be faster due to the nature of the function. This can be done a couple of ways. The best known one is to use the interactive menu, but I'm going to do it using the definite integral template from the Math2 keyboard. First enter the function, then 
the variable, the lower bound of 50, and the upper bound of 3 pi squared plus 30. Now, to force a numerical result, add a tolerance value to the upper bound. This is done by entering a comma followed by a tolerance, which is generally a small value around 0.00001. Pressing execute, we get the result of 0.1345 to four decimal places. On a handheld, this will save you a few precious seconds. Our next calculation with probability density function f is in part i, when we need to find the exact value of its mean. To find this, we need to integrate v times f of v from 30 to 3 pi squared plus 30. We can do this by editing the definite integral calculation from part g. Change the lower bound to 30, multiply f by the variable of integration, and remove the tolerance so that we will get an exact result. Pressing execute, we obtain a mean of 3 pi squared plus 12. For part j, we are introduced to the probability density function g, which is a transform of function f according to this rule. This rule operates on the graph of f and corresponds to a horizontal dilation by factor b and a vertical dilation by factor a. The result of this transformation is the probability density function g with a mean of 2 pi squared plus 8. Based on the horizontal dilation, we can see that b times by the mean of 3 pi squared plus 12 equals the mean of 2 pi squared plus 8. This tells us that b equals 2 thirds. As f and g are both probability density functions, then the dilations need to preserve the area under the curve. For this reason, a times b equals 1. This means that a equals 1 over 2 over 3, which is 3 over 2.